What's up, everybody, and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. I got an email today from Mr. Jazzy Chords directing me to Louis Marcos' page again. And he was talking about Palumboism. And he mentioned my name and wanted to know if I had any insight on it. Now, I have no medical facts. I have no scientific research. I have none of that to back this up because nothing has ever been studied on this stuff, ever. There's no, no proof out there. But I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it in super heavyweights, heavyweights, light heavyweights, bantam weights who are very small by nature. And I don't think that the theory of the synthol is what's causing the atrophy of the limbs. It is a real thing. Palumbosum is absolutely a real thing. It is a thickening of the torso, a shrinking of the limbs, and almost a physical change in the face, which we know the bone structure can change in the face with human growth hormone. Now what I think causes this is a combination of human growth hormone in excess, steroids in excess, in heavy training for a long period of time. I think those three things are what causes this because everybody that seems to get it has used growth hormone in good amounts for long periods of time, has trained very heavy for long periods of time, or all about the same age roughly, or at least you know have been training for about the same amount of time on those drugs, and are using heavy androgens. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the theory that I have, and there's no scientific evidence basing this on, is that the limbs actually get longer. Your arms and legs actually grow longer while your joints thicken, including your hips thicken, which gives that wider waist look that the, uh, the palumboism has. So now you have a wider waist and longer limbs. As that limb gets longer, which you can see very clearly somebody that's abused growth hormone for a long period of time, their elbows look longer. Okay, where the tricep inserts, there's gonna be a space from the tricep to the elbow about that long. Flex Wheeler has it. Triple H from uh, Wrestling has it, Palumbo has it, Dave, uh, not Dave, who's the big guy, Greg Kovacs has it. All these guys have it, and it's the same look, and they didn't have it when they were younger. So it's absolutely some kind of drug-induced thing, and steroids are not going to make your bones grow. They're not going to make you taller. So it's got to be the doses of growth hormone. Now, as you're training heavy, your muscles get bigger and stronger. Your joints have to accommodate for that. And since you have human growth hormone in excessive amounts, theoretically, your joints can get bigger and stronger. So technically now, if you had an impingement letting the muscle not fire from the nerve, but the joint has been stronger and bigger from all those years of heavy training, the muscle shrinks up, the joint is bigger, you now have that weird look of the atrophy limbs. The bigger midsection, of course they say, oh, well, you got big guts, steroid gut, GH gut, partially right, okay? The hips do actually thicken. And as they thicken, they widen the waist out. So they now have a wider waist, but the amount of foods that these guys are eating that makes their stomach stick out is ridiculous. And it gets to the point where they can't even control their abdominals. So I've seen guys that haven't even been on steroids ever or any kind of drug have huge bellies like that after they eat because they can't keep the, the rectus abdominis and the transverses in. So technically, I don't think that the drugs cause the gut per se, but they absolutely thicken those bones and will cause that, you know, cause that kind of wider waist look. Now you talked about Kovacs, who obviously the guy was on drugs when, um, when he won his pro card. And he had a great physique. I remember seeing him on stage in the Canadian Nationals. And then he really started to push the drugs. But if you guys notice, like Louis was saying, he was bench pressing inclines like 650 pounds for reps. I mean, the guy was doing ridiculous things into the gym. It was it was not even funny the things he was doing, and he was well known to be the strongest bodybuilder in the world. Well, growth hormone plus all those heavy weights plus all the androgens, thicker joints. Think about it. He was a tall guy to begin with, and by the time his career was almost over, he had longer arms and longer legs. Okay, so think about it. That makes sense. But he did use synthol, Palumbo used synthol, you know, all these guys used synthol. Yates, towards the end of his career, was starting to get some of that Palumboism look to him. Now, I do not know for a fact, but I don't feel like Yates used synthol. He never had that look anywhere in his body part, and he was dry and hard everywhere. Synthol I've used personally, and I've used human growth hormone personally. Synthol gives the muscle a full round, but kind of a bloated, smooth look. And New Dory didn't have that anywhere in his body, so why would he get the atrophied limbs if it was more the arms than it was, you know, the legs? And some people could say because he tore his bicep, but the guy used enormous weights. I mean, the, the amount of weight that he used was legendary. And at the same time, he was using growth hormone, maybe not even that much. You know, it's speculated where he used, you know, way more than everybody else, or maybe, who knows what he really used. 
But the bottom line was he was on androgens, he was on growth hormone, and he was doing this really heavy training for a period of time, and at the end of his career started to get it. Now you look at guys like um, this Bantamweight that I was talking about, for instance, and I don't want to say his name, he is a pro, but this Bantamweight's 135 pounds. Now he'd been training for about 25 years or so, and used steroids and growth hormone, never touched synthol. His head looks completely out of proportion the rest of his body. Big belly, wide waist, arms atrophy to almost next to nothing, could get peeled and shredded on stage, but had palumboism at 130 something pounds. So when you think about it like that, he trained with what was heavy for him. Massive doses of androgens, taking the GH, all that stuff led him to having palumboism. So technically it's not the bigger guys only that gets it. Pretty much anyone can get it. And I do feel like it is a thing that happens over time. Like if you blast growth on one for a month, you're not going to get palumboism. You take 15 IUs for a year and a half, two years, you're going to have something happen to you. If you're out there training hard, you're out there pushing your food and you're taking all the androgens and stuff, absolutely this is going to happen to you. So that's my take on it. And like I said, I don't have any proof. I don't have any scientific evidence. But Palumbo was one of the first guys, if you remember, very strong, very big, always on tons of growth hormone. Apparently, you can see it in his face, the way his face looks and his head, how big his head is. And even now, I see him at shows. His head is still huge and his hands and feet are huge. He looks like he has flippers on when he's trying to walk because his feet are so big. And you can see, I mentioned this to Carrie, you can see when he walks, he's got issues with his hips now. So he's got joint problems, big head, big hands, and the thing was named after him, palumboism. Add all those things together, you have those three things. Growth hormone and massive dosages, androgens and massive dosages for long periods of time, and very heavy training for long periods of time. And to me, that is the formula for palumboism. So avoid those three things together, and you shouldn't get palumboism. bios training at gmail.com, www.bios3training.com is the blog. Thank you, Louie, and we're out.